Hello everyone and welcome back to our extremely fun channel. Um, today we, are, we put out posts yesterday on our stories asking everyone to send through questions for our update video. So we're updating everyone on endo, fertility and babies and a bit of wedding too. Yeah, let me throw a bit of wedding in there. <laughs> we'll go through the most frequently asked ones. The first question is just a general update on how our endo is going. Yes, it is. How's your endo going, you <laughs> Um, well, since I got my period back from being pregnant, I mean, having Connor, I have had way less pain, which is awesome, but my periods are like way heavier. They're so wild. It's just They're not a good, savage in nature. Just savage. But, um, my period this time has maybe like gone back to half the pain I had. So hopefully it's not returning too quickly, but you know, a bit of panel on your phone and heat pack smells fine. So that's good. That is good. And your, your pill? Yes, yeah, so I got put on the pill because um, the heavy periods can obviously speed up the endo returning. Um, but it was failed for me. I was mm. spotting the whole time, so I was still bleeding off it. I didn't like it. It wasn't for me. It was the first time I went on it. No. Um, my endo status, I'm actually doing really well. So I'm, I stopped breastfeeding in January, February, it's now June, and I've gotten, I think, two periods, because um, I'm back on the pill, and the pill is doing really, like, amazing things for me, except it made my boobs bigger, which is just so great. I didn't get any of that. <gasps> like, the person I who wish you it. had gotten it, like, and I didn't. Yeah, I wish I could take that from you. Like, they're huge again. So yeah, I'm I'm good. I'm getting one period before Greece and then continuing the pill until I get back. And then I'm getting off it. Okay, next question is, do we get monitored regularly for endo? For people wanting to know what they need to do. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm feeling like something's going on and I feel like this isn't normal, I will definitely go and get a scan to check. I haven't got like any wild cysts growing or... Because you have like your cysts develop very quickly. Yeah, definitely. And I recommended that for her as well. I said, go and get a scan because um, her- she's, she's my yeah. first point of contact. She's like, what does it, what does it mean? I'm like, I've got all this pain <laughs> here and here, like pointing to her ovaries right there. What does that mean? And I'm like, dude, <laughs> go and get a fucking scan. <laughs> Have you gotten a scan yet? Yeah, I did. I had a cyst, new cyst. Good for you. Thank you. Love that for you. <laughs> <laughs> if you notice like a change or a development or something different, then definitely get a check. It's the only way to stay on top of it. We've answered how do you manage period pain before, but maybe just you can recap for mm -hmm. people who haven't seen our other videos. So the best way to manage period pain is two. A exercise when you're not in pain because it helps all your regulate all your hormones yes. and will um, in turn make your pain less. I know it's really hard to get your head around and I didn't believe it when Georgia was telling me but I have been exercising six days a week and I am pain free mm -hmm. and I don't know like how much I just, I just well, you did also just... have like a very large endo clean out before yeah. you were pregnant so I think that's also helped yeah. plus I think the like exercising is definitely it definitely helped yeah 100% also heat packs um, save our lives yeah we might like put a photo of the sticky heat packs that you can actually work away in public for 14 hours. They, they stay hot for 14 hours. They're like such a good tool. I had one on on Saturday night when I had a birthday party on and it was under my clothes. I had tight black pants on and no one could sense anything. An extra form of pain. like It's like just as effective as Panadol. Yeah. yeah. So it's good to like add it on top of if you're taking Panadol or Nurofen or both or Naprogesic, which a lot of people also don't know about. It's made specifically for period pain and it's also really good. Another trick I have is I will get in the shower and just put the hot water on my back and it makes my pain go away. I just put it on my stomach. Sometimes I just lie there and get out a big red patch. <laughs> um, the best advice for newly diagnosed endo people. Or I've got some as well for people who think they have it but they don't. Yeah. So step one is obviously going and getting a diagnosis and 
knowing you have it and then being able to manage it. And then once you find out if you do have it, doing things every single day to help your situation. So um, for me, the best thing to manage it was get on the pill and stop my period. So um, that's what I did and you attempted that as well. Like we've both made active choices to try and help ourselves. And sometimes they don't work out, like yachts didn't work out, but she tried, you know? And um, if you do have it, like don't let it ruin your life. I don't. Yeah. I think one of the most important things that you also mentioned in your previous videos is like not to make it the focus of your life. Mm. Just kind of like try and deal with it, but don't focus so much on it like in a negative way, which is hard yeah. sometimes, but if you can just actively try then it's better than just being really negatively focused on it i think that leads to the next question which is if you're quite young and you find out you have endo should you be freezing your eggs i think it depends on the severity of your endo and you should always ask either your specialist or like a fertility specialist because i guess if you're young and it's not that bad you probably don't need to you just probably need to get on a pill or something marina yeah. to stop your period but um, I wish I knew back then that that was something you should do if you have a severe case of endo to, f to freeze your eggs because I would have had way more. But we've got, I've got one more embryo. So this, that little child's in the freezer right now. I should knit it something like a little beanie. Oh my, <laughs> a micro beanie. <laughs> okay, so I got about 700. Um, will you both have another baby? Is that in the next yeah. session? Next babies, and will we be, will we be trying naturally? So, <laughs> so um, of the I won't be trying naturally because I can't, don't have no tubes, um, <laughs> no tube Tessie. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I can do IVF, and I can. And another question I had was how how come you can only do IVF for limited times, and that's because I have one ovary and that ovary is prone to cysts and when you do IVF your cysts grow and I don't want to get like a fucking massive cyst in that ovary and then lose that ovary yeah. because then I'll have no ovaries and I'll be a menopausal bitch at the age of 30 so it's like a so I can find yeah. balance for you yeah right now I don't have any cysts so oh, say so that one from that one's gone yeah it burst while I was 34 weeks pregnant Paul's on you, you but so thank God. God. Yeah, it's a good time. I will obviously try again um, to put my embryo back in later this year. And if that doesn't work, like, I don't know how, but I will probably do another round of IVF and hate every second of it. But it would be fucking fab. I should document the whole thing. Yeah, you like, should. Mine should I, fine. if I need to do IVF and get a document? the whole process all the needle jabbing oh, i might not watch some of that and all the highs and lows mood swings and god they were fun acne. for us <laughs> watching on the outside was that fun it was like just like wow That's you are lot. angry today <laughs> <laughs> and you um well i will be trying with hormone treatment again and i'm just not going to go into further than that. Oh, I refuse. I can't do what you did. You're you can do it stronger. if you needed to do it, but you, don't, you won't need to do it okay. because it will happen naturally. First go. Second. But remember, I figured out I shouldn't be driving when I was on those Oh yeah. Because they made me very strange in the brain. You went on, on these hormones to help her ovulation or something yeah. and she was becoming quite Russell, stupid. <laughs> As in, a red light would happen, and she'd be like, "Is that green?" I couldn't tell. No, I couldn't tell if and I was like, what? I couldn't tell if that light was for me or if it was the next intersection. I don't know how to explain it. And then she looked it up, and apparently, it causes confusion. And that drug, fog, yeah. yeah, that was weird. I'm gonna try it. <laughs> Top tips for someone going through IVF, and maybe also how you think um, you should support people going through IVF? Yes, that's a great question. So top tips for going through IVF is to, if you're, if you're a guy, just brush all those mood swings to the side and, and just know that 
She doesn't mean anything she's saying, it's just the hormones. And if you're a girl, try and control those emotions and recognize when you're feeling angry that maybe it's just a little bit of hormone imbalance and try and reason with yourself. Also, try not to just think about it 24 seven and do your own head in. It's really hard not to do that, but I would do things like coloring in and watching movies and I would constantly be going to breakfast with the, the girls or dinners, just trying to get my mind off it. Because if you sit there and think about it, sometimes it's can not take good. over. Yeah. And what about for someone going through IVF, how do you support them? Um, I think just making effort to check in with them a lot because sometimes you don't necessarily reach out and say, I'm having a bad day. So we were constantly checking in with this when she was going through IVF and yeah, just asking, really good. just asking like, how are you going? How are the needles going? Um, but and also they gave a lot of um, encouragement and support and like, Yacht would always be like, you are so fucking strong. And just hearing it would be like, yeah, I am. Like, I can, I can do, do this. this. So encouraging words is really important if you have a friend going through it. And also sometimes like having to bring the person back down, like helping them see through their hormones because sometimes I would be like, is it me or my hormones? And then she'd explain something and would kind of reason and be like, sweetheart, sweetie, <laughs> that. You cray, you cray. It's just an orange juice. You need to just simmer, <laughs> for example. But yeah, so I think that's um, another good one. That's a good one. So everyone wants to know if we want more babies and how many we want each. So you, I definitely want more babies. Oh, way more game than me. Um, that's because I don't have to go through IVF. Yeah. Mm. Like that's a big one. But yeah, I definitely want more babies. Before we had Connor, we were really set on having three. Now that we've had Connor, we're experiencing a child, like we'd be really happy with two and we'll see how we go with a third child. I would love two and that's it. I feel like you've always just wanted two. I just want two. I know I used to want three, mm -hmm. remember? I'd be like, I came from three, I want mm -hmm. three, but now I just want two. Mm -hmm. I would even be happy with one. But the Zani is just a gorgeous angel ball of energy. And I'm just happy with just that amount of energy. Yeah, but I'd be happy with um, one or two. So if I couldn't have any more, I'm so content. Um, but I feel sorry for Zani that she doesn't have siblings. So bet not. Might may as well give her one. So are we nervous to take our babies to Greece? I am. I'm nervous, but I also feel like I'm just going to have to roll with it and... <laughs> see how we go because I, <laughs> I don't really know what else to say about it I <laughs> my child has a lot of energy so no the plane ride the plane ride you're gonna have your own child to worry about and my child cannot sit on my lap like she she refuses she needs to climb up everything 24 7 like i had a photo shoot on the weekend with this photographer who photographs babies for a living and she said my child had the most energy she's ever shot ever and i was like yes yeah, so you're nervous about the flight yes yeah see i've taken the approach of i'm expecting the worst and i can only really be better from angel. that he will just have like a book in front of him and read the novel you know yeah, but he also gets like the, uh, when he wants to, walking, you know? I'll just be like, no, <laughs> it's reading time. I mean, I'm lucky because he's a bit older, which is the next question, how old are they now? So Connor's 16 months, one and four months old, and Zani is nine months. Yes. Yep, so they're seven months apart. So I think when they're that little, I think it's maybe not as easy because you can't really explain. <laughs> I mean, you can't really to Connor either, but a bit more, so. I've got like so many questions about my weight loss and my fitness and I like would be here all day. So I'm going to do another video on my fitness um, journey and Yacht also has, I have so many questions about Connor's speaking and development and a lot of people wanting ideas for wanting to know like what I do with him on a day-to-day -day basis, which is like a whole other video. So I'll do a separate one of that as well. 
Next question I've gotten a lot of is, are we speaking Greek to the babies? Yes. I think they're both around, like, they are, so their grandmas speak a lot of Greek to them. I speak Greek to Connor. Georgia, I'm assuming, definitely would speak Greek to Zani. They both love Greek nursery rhymes and songs and that kind of thing. So they're definitely exposed to Greek. Probably not as much as I was, but, yeah, definitely. Correct. Favourite brands or outfits that our babies like to wear? So I just deck Zania in... Um, the US H&M and Zara. I find like Zara in Australia has shit stock, but in the US it's epic. So I just get it all from America and ship it to a PO box and then ship it to me. A US PO box and then ship it to me. And it's honestly everything that we have here but cheaper and better. Mm. I, I definitely like have a couple of favorite labels, but I buy a lot of Zara and the H&M too. Yeah. Um, the other labels that I love are August Fair by Billy and Fair Loves Boo. And I'm and also Monster. obsessed with Riley and Crew that they showed me their website and I'm obsessed with their stuff. It's so cute. And I also love Lawn and um, there are so many I can't think of them right now. Yeah, but they're like probably the most common I'd say that we get. Yeah, correct. I've got a lot of questions about how we're coping with the babies and working. <gasps> a lot of questions about it. Um, it is really hard. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It, it is. is. We're pretty much being full-time moms and full-time business owners. So it's intense. But I'm going to say for both of us, we're lucky we love doing both. Um, I definitely get a lot of help when I'm in the office. Um, everyone helps out a little bit. Plus, Connor is with um both of his grandmas one day each a week so that helps with work yeah a lot so i uh, everything she just said except i'm really lucky to get three days a week with the baby's grandmas because my mother-in-law can look after it twice so i have three days full days at work and then the other two days i'm at home and like to be honest i don't i'll get most of my emails done on my phone and that's about it because zani's full on yeah and I can't <laughs> yeah you have to and and like I guess for me as well I catch up a lot at night maybe like an hour I'll do like a power hour every night where I just same. catch up on the really important stuff so if you are in the same position I think allocating a, like a little hour at night time it relieves like any stress you have for the next day and you can just concentrate on being like the best mom that you can be. So I've got a lot of routine questions again. So are our babies still in the routines? Connor is still in a routine. Zani is still in a routine. I mean, Zani will still have like bad eras. Like at the moment she's got teeth coming through and she'll scream. It's like the cutest teeth I've ever seen. <laughs> but if you just stick to your routine, like they'll go back into it. So yeah. persistent mm -hmm. and babies thrive off repetition. So if you, it. yeah, so I think if you show them what they're supposed to do, they'll do it. If mm -hmm. you don't show them what they're supposed to do, how, how do they know when to sleep and how much to sleep? You just got to, you've got to teach them that. And that's why I think routine benefits our babies. A lot of people were wondering, um, they know that Connor doesn't watch TV or use electronics yet. Um, they want to know if Zani does, either of them. Yeah, no, she... I haven't put on TV around her. She will see um, my screen on my phone if I'm on it, which I try not Same. to be. I try not to be, but it's really hard. So yeah. she will see my screen on my phone, but I don't put on anything to keep her entertained because I feel like when they're that little, they're supposed to just be a sponge and like absorb everything. Yeah. So I don't think a TV show would be doing anything for her. I'm sure that will change. Yep. Yeah. Um, when she can actually understand and get value out of the, yeah. what she's watching, like education. Definitely, they're not going to have nothing forever. Yeah, yeah. Just at this point, I feel like it's just an overload on their brain, and I heard it affects sleeping. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, no, I take my sleep very seriously. Very seriously. I don't really want to have a child screaming because her brain's overloaded with colours. And that leads to the next question of how much sleep are we getting at the moment? I think we've been getting full night sleep for a long time. Yeah. I'm, I'm jinxed it. But. 
Yeah. So my baby will maybe cry. I'll put her down at seven, and she might have a cry around nine, nine thirty. But I'm still awake, so it doesn't interrupt my sleep. But like hers is interrupted just because of her. Um, if she might hear us or fatigue her or whatever, and then she'll usually sleep till seven a.m. Actually, no, she'll wake up at six most days and then play in her bed till seven. I'm really lucky she, for some reason, doesn't cry in the morning. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, so I'm gonna go through my wedding questions. I have a lot of them, so I'll try and answer maybe five, maybe four, don't know. <laughs> um, the most frequently asked one was, are you gonna video your wedding? So I have amazing um, videographers and photographers going over, so I am gonna video it. And obviously I wanna have memories of that day. So I'll share it with you when it's made and um, I'll try and get the girls to do stories on the day so you can have a look at oh, it. I'll spam. Just sort the shit out of that day. Story the shit out of that day. Um, also, where am I going on my honeymoon? I'm, I'm, so my wedding is in Kithra, which is where Georgia is from and his whole family is there. So I'll be going on my honeymoon just with Georgia and Zani will be staying with her grandparents and the rest of the family for a week and a half. How are you going to do Yeah, I don't know. I wanted to go to Italy for my honeymoon, but I was like, nope, I can't be out too far. that far away from Zani. So I'm just going around the Greek islands, like um, Santorini, Milos and Mykonos. And um, that's just like a flight or two away from Zani. So I'm okay with that. Mm. But I'm not okay with not seeing her for a week and a half. I'm sure you'll get like so much spamming of live. I'm better. Live action. Who designed my wedding dress and who is your wedding planner? So my wedding planner is Pavlo Creative and she's actually a good friend of mine and she is the most talented event coordinator. She's amazing. Like ever. So I'll link her below and obviously you'll see all the work she does and what she does for my wedding. Um, highly re recommend her and my wedding dress is getting made by Leah de Gloria in Sydney and um, I'm absolutely over, absolutely over the moon with uh, what she's created it's and amazing. the concepts she's taken from me and like made it fucking epic so I can't wait to see it next time yeah I'm really lucky I took you that because you had such a great idea thank you yep so I feel like I can't wait for everyone to see you in this dress. It's I mean, it's not that good. It's not. It's like pretty good. You're a vision. Thank you. I can't wait for Ellen to cry. <sighs> I reckon Liana will cry. Oh, Liana will cry too. Someone wants to know: Are you going to continue the intense fitness post wedding? And the answer to that is fuck no. And I can't wait. I'm just. I have three weeks left of intense. I, I last week I trained seven days, and on two of those days I trained twice. But you are a machine. But I mean, like a machine. No, I'm not. I am not maintaining this. Definitely not. I will. Tr I will definitely stay healthy and make really good food choices and train three to four times a week. None of this intensity. I got a question asking, do I have that? <laughs> Overhang, oh. um, so hot. The overhang over the what? scar with the cesarean, some people oh, get like the overhang. Oh, right. I didn't get, wow, Nelly. I didn't get the oh. overhang, um, luckily, but my scar did keloid, so I've got mm. like a little lump, like a lump scar. Mm. I don't know. I don't know if you, can you fix that, guys? I don't know. Help me. If you can, or if you know if you can, can you leave? Okay guys, that's all of our questions done. Um, we hope you liked it and it was informative. And if you have any other pressing questions that you want to know, just leave them below and we'll try to get back to you. Bye. Thanks guys.